everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Paola and today I have a very special guest. Sonora, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us about your book? Yes, so I'm Sonora Reyes, author of The Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School, this little baby right here. <laughs> It follows 16-year-old Yamilet, who volunteers to follow her brother to a mostly white Catholic school to keep him out of trouble after he's been getting in too many fights at their old school. What she does not tell him or her mom is that she has ulterior motives for going to this Catholic school. She actually at the old school has just been um, rejected and outed by her crush slash ex-best friend at their old school. And she wants a fresh start of her own. So she decides to go back into the closet. And she also decides that she is not going to be falling in love ever again, um, which proves complicated because there is a character who very quickly um, tests her will not to fall in love. <laughs> I love that. I love teenagers who go, because I was one of them, who, who go like, oh, I'm never falling in love again, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, you're 17. Yeah, Chill. she's literally like, she's literally like, this is like first, second chapter stuff where she's like, I'm never falling in love again. And then goes and immediately sees Bo, the only openly queer girl at school. And she's like, hard eyes. <laughs> so. <laughs> I love it. I, I just... I'm a sucker for that kind of narrative. So what were some of the themes that you wanted to explore in the Lesbiana's Guide from the get-go and which kind of snuck up on you? So I always knew that I wanted it to be like coming of age where I knew Yami was going to be coming out in the book. So I knew that it was going to focus on coming out story and found family a lot of like self-love self-acceptance that journey there's two things that snuck up on me first of all so there's a big theme in the book that being closeted doesn't make you a bad person it doesn't make you untrustworthy it doesn't make you a liar it just means that you're surviving and you're doing what you got to do to get through to the next day as I was writing the book I realized that I really needed to get that across because I I'm really tired of the narrative that like, oh, you're living a lie because you're closeted where like, that's just you, like you're just doing what you're just, you don't owe anyone an explanation for who you are. You know what I mean? So that kind of snuck up on me. I wasn't going into it with the intention of doing that, but as I was writing it, it became very clear that I needed to explore that theme and like make sure that that was very straightforward in there and then also the familial relationships I wasn't expecting to hit so hard especially with Yami and her brother Cesar the first draft of this Cesar was not a big character he was you know her brother and like they weren't as close but then like as I was writing it I was like I love this boy and like <laughs> I needed to make him more um and so he became like he stole the show he like took So much and so the whole familial relationships and the sibling bonding that really kind of took me by surprise interesting because it's such a strong relationship that I was assuming that was the first thing on your mind yeah actually my outline for this book was so 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 different from what I ended up writing like originally Cesar was supposed to be not her brother he was supposed to be her best friend but immediately as I started writing it I was like like oh he's got to be her brother like it just like became clear and I had to make him her brother and so it just kind of happened and I'm so happy that it did because I love him so much um he's probably my favorite character in the book <laughs> besides Yami obviously I love Yami so on that same topic if Cesar got his own book what shenanigans would you have for him so I've actually thought about this a lot <laughs> Um, because I would love to write a Cesar book ever since I wrote the Lesbianas Guide like ever since I finished it I knew like I want to write a Cesar book and like if publishing lets me do it I'll do it but like I'll probably end up writing it even if I never publish it yeah so I without giving too much away because I don't want to spoil the Lesbianas Guide but I think Cesar's book would focus a lot on mental health and his journey of 
his own self-acceptance and his own story of self-love and learning to um, basically get on Yami's level. <laughs> and also his romance too. Yeah. That is so sweet. I would love to read that publishing. Let Sonora do it. Um, so what's one thing you would say to Yami if you had her in front of you? So I think that depends on when in the story I have her in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> so like if I have her in the beginning, I was thinking about this and I was like, would I even want to say anything to her if I had her in the beginning? Because then I would ruin her story. You know what I mean? <laughs> if I give her advice that she's going to grow too fast and then the story mm -hmm. will be different, you know? So because she gets where she needs to get, I don't even know if I would say anything if I met her in the beginning of the story. But if I saw her in the end, I would have some words. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I might even get like emotional because seeing... Yami at the end of her journey like where obviously it's not the end of her journey but you know like at the end of the book where she is like come to this point I don't want to spoil it but it's a happy ending you know yes like she finds what she's looking for I just would love to see that and I would tell her how proud I am of her and how much I love her and I would probably just get emotional like just I wrote this book like it's not a self-insert or anything but mm -hmm. I wrote it with the idea of like okay here's the story that I would have loved to have when I went to Catholic school or like when I was in high school like how would I have wanted my year to end you know yeah. oh that's right. that's really sweet <laughs> how wholesome yeah. Yeah. So you talk about Catholic school and religion and stuff, and this isn't in the questions that I sent you, but like what part of it is like true and what part of it is like made up in terms of like her environment, not in her story. So <laughs> I based the Catholic school very closely off of this Catholic school that I went to because I only know what I, what I saw if, as far as Catholic school goes, like I only went to Catholic school for one year, just like Yami. As far as the environment goes and like the, the people there, I did exaggerate some things, mm -hmm. but for the most part, it was very true to what I experienced. So one thing that, that I did put in the book that was real for me <clears throat> is the difference between public school and Catholic school for me, because I went to both. The biggest difference is how fast rumors spread and how rumors are now we can play never have i ever okay. so never have i ever stolen a book i have not stolen a book oh look at you being good <laughs> <laughs> um, never have i ever broken a book spine unintentionally I have. I have. <laughs> never have i ever written fanfic for a popular fandom <laughs> i don't know if i would call it a popular fandom but i did write a lot of fan fiction for young justice <laughs> Oh, hello. Yes, yes. I love Young Justice. It was my special interest for like two, three years. I made like video edits. I did like the whole nine yards. Like I was everything. Look at you. I love that. I love <laughs> fandom so much. That's so fun. I know. It's so great. Never have I ever dug your pages of my book. I have. I have. <laughs> All the time. Never have I ever complained about a book to movie adaptation because the adaptation was really really bad I'm sure that I have I'm sure yeah. and finally never have I ever canceled plans to read definitely canceled reading plans like I would be like oh I'm gonna read all day tomorrow and then just didn't do that I've also canceled plans so that I could read double whammy, double whammy yeah <laughs> Perfect. that's 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 good I that that's a good interpretation of the question it's just nobody else has ever read the question like that so I oh, just thought that exactly. was so fun <laughs> that was really fun <laughs> you host the QTBIPOC author chat on Twitter so mm -hmm. what's been one of your biggest takeaways in hosting that and also like do you get tired of it <laughs> <laughs> um so I love hosting that chat like it's so fun for me um it can be like overwhelming like leading up to it being like oh crap I have to schedule my questions like oh I forgot to like pick the questions I have to scramble to pick the questions 
Um, but once it's happening and once the chat is over, I always feel fulfilled and I always feel really happy. Um, so like, I'm always super happy with that. I will say, keep an eye on that space because there will be some fun announcements happening. I think it's going to be the June chat where something really fun is going to get announced. Oh my God. So keep an eye out. What do you hope readers take away from Yummy story? I think the biggest thing, again, coming back to the whole closeted thing doesn't make you a liar. I think that if anyone is closeted and they're reading the book, I want them to feel seen and I want them to feel like it's it's okay to come out on your own terms. Like you don't have to come out just because you feel social pressure. And that coming out on your own terms can be such a an uplifting experience. Like I didn't say this before. I think I meant to say it before, but with Yami, a, a big reason why I wrote this book is to show coming out on your own terms because she got outed at her old school and now she gets a second chance. And so I, I want people to feel encouraged to not encouraged to stay in the closet, but like encouraged to like go at their own pace and to feel like they don't have, they don't feel pressure to like do something just because they think that they're living a lie or anything like yeah. that. I also want people to feel like empowered, like standing up for what you believe in is worth it every time and just feel like ready to take on the world. And like, even if that just means like telling their crush how they feel, like, you know, just, I, I want people to feel like ready to, to do something, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. Kids are so lucky that they get to read your book. I'm oh. so excited for it to be in the hands of everybody else. And mm -hmm. I'm just genuinely so grateful that stories like yours, like Yami, exist in the world. Very thankful for that. Oh, yeah, I, I can't wait. I'm so excited. And the people at home, don't forget to check the description below for all relevant links, including Sonora's website and obviously buy links for the Lesbianas Guide to Catholic School. Thank you so much for watching. Sonora, thank you so, so much for doing this with me. Thank you so much for watching once again, and we will see you hopefully in another one. Bye. Bye.